Yellowstone supervolcano volcanic gas releases providing clues to Earth's formation. This is from USGS, the latest news concerning this, but I want to remind you that the uh, carbon dioxide release from the Yellowstone supervolcano is 40,000 tons of carbon dioxide released every day. Now, because of the huge amount of carbon dioxide released from Yellowstone, basically, carbon dioxide is released from volcanoes worldwide. This is something that is usual. But the huge amount of 40,000 tons of carbon dioxide released by Yellowstone is what prompted the geologists to find out why so much was being released. And this is one of the ways that they found that there was this huge magma reservoir underneath the magma chamber of Yellowstone. As we know, Yellowstone is the second largest uh, supervolcano of the Earth. And from what the geologists say, there are at least 20 supervolcanoes worldwide. Now, this release was dated June 22nd, and I'll leave a link below for you for this. With oceans covering over 70% of the Earth's surface and an atmosphere rich in volatile elements, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen, Earth has seemingly always provided the perfect environment for life to develop in the solar system. But how and when did these volatiles arrive on the planet? It turns out the answer lies buried thousands of kilometers deep below Yellowstone National Park. The Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles this is written by scientists and collaborators of Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. This week's contribution is from Dr. Michael Broadley, postdoctorate researcher of the Université de Lorraine in Nancy, France. So this is from a uh, France, French team. Now, they said, when our planet formed some four and a half billion years ago, the solar system was a very different, chaotic place. And also, of course, our Earth has seen a lot of changes since then. Now, 180 million years ago, for example, North America was joined to Europe. The Atlantic Ocean was not there. And that's when it, was start, it started uh, uh, spreading. Can you imagine what the Earth looked like 180 million years ago? Totally different than today. And by the way, the Earth is growing every single year at the rate of the human fingernail. That's how fast the Earth is growing. The Earth is growing. Now, the Earth is thought to have grown from repeated violent collisions between kilometer-sized asteroids that culminated in impact between the proto-Earth and a Mars-sized planetoid, an impact that resulted in the formation of the moon, some people believe. These impacts would have generated huge amounts of energy that could have melted the entire planet and potentially stripped it of volatile elements like oxygen, carbon, and nitrogen, leaving it dry and barren of the ingredients essential for life. The general consensus has been that Earth was resupplied with volatile elements following the moon forming impact, probably thanks to comets and asteroids originating from the cold outer solar system. But now a group of researchers from the Centre de Recherche Petrographique et Geochimique, the Université of Lorraine in Nancy, France, in conjunction with scientists from Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute, Oxford University, and the Instituto Nacional de Geophysica e Volcanologia suggests that this idea of late delivery of volatiles to Earth may need to be re-examined. In order to travel back through time and glimpse at the chemical composition of the early Earth, the group of scientists headed to Yellowstone National Park to collect gases that are released from the volcanic system there. Yellowstone is the ideal location to study Earth's primordial chemistry as the volcanic gases released there have a source deep within the planet providing a view of the most pristine parts of Earth's interior, said Dr. Peter Barry of the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute. By measuring small quantities of gases such as krypton and xenon, called noble gases, contained within the volcanic output at Yellowstone, the scientists were able to determine the origins of volatiles, such as water, that remain hidden in deep earth. This was possible because noble gases are a special group of elements that are not affected by chemical and biological processes, unlike other elements like carbon. Noble gases can therefore act as a sort of fingerprint that allow us to pinpoint where the volatiles on earth originated from 
even after four and a half billion years of Earth's history. The team found that the mantle between Yellowstone retains krypton and xenon fingerprints that closely match that of meteorites, but perhaps most importantly by taking advantage of the characteristics of the xenon, the authors of this study were able to show that noble gases contained within the Yellowstone mantle source have remained isolated deep in the mantle of the majority of Earth's history. Now we have a mantle plume under Yellowstone, it's a hot spot, it's a mantle plume coming from Baja, coming all the way through, uh, I've uh, many times put that map on when we look at the uh, earthquakes uh, in the Utah and California and uh, Idaho area. There's a mantle plume coming, reaching from uh, Baja, coming in the towards east under Utah, coming into Wyoming, and then turning uh, 180, uh, well, 90 degrees into Idaho. And there's a mantle plume there, magma under there. So uh, perhaps the most importantly, they say, by making a taking advantage of the characteristics of the xenon, the authors of the study were able to show that noble gases contained within the Yellowstone mantle source have remained isolated deep in the mantle for the majority of Earth's history. Professor Bernard Marty from Université de Lorraine and co-author of the study explained further, he says, xenon has nine different isotopes or flavors. The one specific isotope, xenon-129, holds the key to understanding the timing of volatile delivery to Earth, he says. Xenon-129 is unique as it forms from the radioactive decay of iodine-129, which has a very short half-life. This means that after the first 100 million years of Earth's history, all of the iodine-129 had transformed to xenon-129, and the amount of xenon-129 was locked in place. The authors showed that the amount of xenon-129 in the Yellowstone mantle source is different from other volcanoes that sample the mantle closer to the Earth's surface, and therefore mixing between the deep mantle and material arriving late on the Earth's surface must have been limited. This study therefore suggests that the Earth kept its volatile elements deposit its violent upbringing and that a lucky late delivery of comets and asteroids may not be required to explain the origin of life. The research team is planning further field campaigns to Yellowstone to further investigate how the Earth obtained its volatiles became the habitable planet that we know today, our beautiful home, our Earth. We have only just begun to scratch the surface of the different secrets to Earth's formation hidden in the deep mantle, they say. This study was supported by the European Research Council, the Deep Carbon Observatory, and the Sloan Foundation. And this is on USGS, and I'll leave a link below for you for this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today more of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.